Before I get into this video, I just want to talk about this. Last night, a fucking psychopath, because this is America, and what else would you expect in 2018, shot up a yoga studio in Tallahassee, like 10 minutes from FSU campus, and killed two people, one of which was a senior year tried out at FSU, and the other was an FSU faculty member. Like, literally breaks my fucking heart. Like, when I first heard about the shooting and the victims hadn't been identified yet, my first thought was, please don't let it be, like, a college student. Like, that's so funny fucked i just it really fucks with me when people die young by like not even stupidity like drunk driving and shit like literally just like the world's worst fucking luck so my heart like completely goes out to tallahassee and to the families of those people especially that fucking girl like only 21 holy shit it's so fucked hey guys what's up it's me Today, we're gonna talk about relationships and dating and liking someone because although I'm single, now and forevermore, <laughs> I am the self-proclaimed expert on this shit. So I've been watching Love Island like religiously, like at least two episodes a day for the past like two weeks. I talked about Love Island in my previous video, basically long story short, it's kind of like the British version of Bachelor Paradise, except it's way raunchier and they don't bleep out anything and everyone walks around like basically naked and nothing gets blurred out and they have to do all these weird super sexual challenges and shit. It's like stuff that definitely would not be allowed on American television. Honestly, I feel like the reason that I am so smart to an extent about the dynamics of like men and women and fuck boys and everything besides the fact that I've been fucked over so many times, <laughs> lol, personal experience, is because I do watch so many fucking reality shows, dating shows, whatever, and when you watch that stuff all the time and just watch like how the dude reacts to the girl doing this and how the girl reacts to the dude leaving her for another bitch, you kind of learn stuff. And my father's even told me like Brighton with as much love dating reality TV shows that you've watched over the years, you should literally be an expert at relationships by now. So like, why the fuck do you keep failing at them? And I'm like, I don't fucking know dad. Why don't you just twist the knife in my back a little harder? But because of Love Island and watching the dynamics, I've had some ideas pop in my head of things I wanted to talk to you about. So today we're just gonna talk about some stuff about liking someone, maybe this will put someone that you like into perspective or a situation you're in with a boy or a girl, whatever, in perspective. This fucking cat over here is fucking with this shit and I'm gonna like blow my fucking brains out. So getting into the video, I don't know if this is gonna be the only thing I talk about or if I'll talk about something else. It depends on how much I talk, how much I ramble. But the first thing I wanted to talk about is how liking someone is never enough. Like even having those feelings, those emotions, whatever, like that's like the first step, like the base level of like growing something with someone. Like, oh good, we like each other. Like, yeah, no shit. But that is never enough to like actively pursue someone, have them pursue you, grow into a relationship, be together forever, blah, 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 whatever. It's just the base level start of where things could go. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that person is the best person for you or even a good person for you at all, just because you like them. Because I have had emotions, feelings for men in the past that have been absolute fucking scumbags. That, like looking back now, I'm like, how could I even have had those feelings for them? like the ultimate fuck boy like i really think that looking back now i don't even think that my feelings for the ultimate fuck boy were like real feelings because i think like you need love to like nurture and grow and like give love back and stuff and he didn't give me any love he gave me a lot of hate and a lot of shit so i think that i like low-key had like battered wife syndrome and he just kept mentally and verbally and emotionally abusing the fuck out of me every chance he got that I was just so desperate for him to like turn the page like I was so desperate to just like do something for him or be there for him or have sex with him or whatever it is that I could do whatever I could do just in hopes that he would be like oh shit like Brighton is cool Brighton is valuable like just so desperate for that like affection because he never gave it to me which is like literally so fucked like I can't even believe that I was ever that girl that I was ever in that low of a place or at that low of self-esteem that I let someone use me for sex and then not only that but like actually treat me like dog shit actually acted like they didn't know me if they saw me in public ugh it honestly nauseates me, but we live and we learn through our experiences and I really don't think that this channel would be as focused on relationships and dating and self-love as it is now 
if it wasn't for the old time fuck boy. So it really just does go to show that everything in your life works out the way that it's meant to. Like it might take you years after a bad situation to be able to reflect and be like, oh my God, because of that, this happened or I met this person or I started a YouTube and became a relationship and dating and life coach because someone fucked me over so bad. Like you never know the route your life is going in, which I just think is so crazy. Like that's literally in itself a whole other video, just how your life is so fucking sporadic and random and it's like things just fall in your lap and who you are and who you're meant to become just happens over time because of the people and the situations that you've been through. Like at this point, I am so fucking grateful that the ultimate fuckboy happened to me and when it was happening, it was like the most devastating, emotional, traumatic shit of my fucking life. So be appreciative of even all the bad times and all the bad people because it's preparing you for something so much bigger and better because you physically, emotionally, spiritually wouldn't be able to be in the mindset, have the brain power, have the willpower, have whatever it is to be your best you, to go after your goals, to pursue your dreams if you didn't go through the shit you went through that have made you who you are today. So you really gotta appreciate all of it, is what I'm saying. But back to what I was saying about liking someone not being enough, just because you like someone and they can like not even be a fuckboy. Like let's say you like someone who really likes you and y'all are vibing and y'all like care about each other and whatever the fuck and the guy is treating you really well and you're treating the guy well or guy guy, girl girl, whatever. Just because I talk like in heteronormative slang because I am heterosexual doesn't mean that all of these things I talk about is secluded to only female male relationships like I'm just putting that out there like if you love men if you love women regardless of what you are if you love trees and you identify as a flower you do you boo I hope this shit helps you out so let's say that you like someone for like a month or something and you think it's like really it's gonna go really well and you're like so about it whatever and then you just realize that maybe something isn't there that's like what you need like on love island there was a guy who was seeing a girl for a few weeks and she was like really really introverted really quiet really shy like just like such like a little puppy that needed love and he was like super outgoing and had like this really great sense of humor and stuff and they were paired up for a few weeks and then a new girl comes in who's like really bubbly and really outgoing and like matches his sense of humor and he's kind of like fuck like I've been paired up with this girl I'm really attracted to this girl I genuinely like and care about this girl but this other girl is like more on my wavelength I could be my lover and my best friend whereas this other girl I've been paired up with her for weeks and like it takes so much energy to get anything out of her because she's so quiet and so introverted so he ended up switching partners during the recoupling ceremony and the original girl was like devastated and like she has absolutely every right to be devastated if I've been chilling with a dude for like three weeks and then he just decides that he meets someone else he likes more than me like that's shitty because then you're also going to compare yourself to the new person and I get why it sucks but like on paper being as extroverted and like humorous as he was and needed someone that matched that for a long-term relationship and he found that in someone else that doesn't make him a bad guy you can't control the connection you have with someone else you can't control the emotions that you have for somebody else even though she has every right to be upset and devastated and feel like she was fucked over so in situations like that also you have to be able to step back and like really understand both viewpoints because in that situation it's so easy to be like wow he was talking to her for three weeks and then just got rid of her for a new girl like yeah that sounds really bad and it is shitty and she has the right to be sad but like what if that was you what if you've been seeing a guy for a few weeks that you liked enough but you weren't getting 100 everything you wanted from them to be with them for like a significant period of time and then you meet someone else who gives you all those things that this other person was lacking. Like obviously if you put yourself first, you're gonna pick the person who ticks off more boxes for you. So just because you like someone and are attracted to them and genuinely care about them, sometimes that's not enough. And so you have to think about that both ways in terms of if a guy fucks you over, you have to think maybe some things about you weren't everything that he wants or needs in a partner and that's not a criticism of you it's just like reality and you have to be able to be mature enough to be like okay well maybe i wasn't everything he wanted or needed and that's fine we're different clearly if i'm not everything he wants or needed then over time i would find out that he's also not everything i want to need and there's going to be someone else much better suited for me but if you're the person who's in control and has the power in this situation where the dude had the power, if you're the one who meets someone else you like more, you're allowed 
to have stronger, better feelings and connections with another person. And you don't have to feel guilty or bad about that because just liking someone is never enough because there's plenty of dudes that I like. There's plenty of dudes that I can get along with and I'm attracted to that I could have sex with, whatever. But does that mean that person takes off all the boxes for me that I need to like spend multiple days a week with them, have them my family, be with them in a committed relationship for a really long time? Does this person make me laugh? Does this person give me all the emotional support that I need? Like just because you like someone that's never fucking enough. And in the same regards, you have to keep in mind that love is blind, which basically just means that first of all, love is an emotion. It's something you feel towards somebody and you don't get to control who you have that feeling for, okay? Because your emotions aren't connected by like physicalities and your visual sight and whatever. Like just because you're attracted to someone because your eyeballs take in this image and your brain registers it as attractive or something doesn't mean that you're going to have like this emotional feeling. Like love is such a powerful emotion. Like just emotions in general are so powerful. Like they're literally what makes us human beings. What differentiates us from every other fucking species on the planet is the amount of emotions that we have and the consciousness that we have and everything like that. Love is blind in the sense that love doesn't know who you are for for it's just something that grows inside of you for anyone like there are people that I've fallen for that like have been everything to me like everything that I could want and then there have been people that I've fallen for that it's kind of like I don't even really know why I fell for this person but I did like what the fuck emotions what the fuck heart what the fuck are you doing I think we've all been there but it's also blind in the sense that once you have these blinders on you just have this tunnel vision of love emotions I care so much about you I like you so much I'll do anything for you you're everything you're my person I've been there before with people obviously, <laughs> but we don't need to get into that either. You completely disallow yourself to be aware of any of this person's faults or weaknesses or things about them that maybe don't tick off all your boxes or maybe things about them that don't make them a good partner long term. Like maybe you fall in for someone who's super great and who's super fun to party with or something and you just think, oh, this is so great. We party all the time. We have fun all the time. We're best friends. But is this person in the long run going to be a good fit for me in terms of my career goals and my aspirations and my dreams? Is this person going to hold me back from accomplishing those things or is this person going to help like raise me up and like be a boss beside me, you know? And that's just like an example. That's not about anyone in particular. It's just... There's so many negative traits about everyone. Like I could list on two hands right now, like my top 10 worst qualities. Like I'm a very self-aware person, which I think we all should work to become more self-aware because once you know what makes you shitty, because we're all a little shitty, you can work on it. And also when people call you out for being shitty, if you already know that you're shitty, you can be like, yeah, you're right. I, I understand what you mean. I know that I do that. I'll try and be better. Because when you aren't self-aware and you don't realize what makes you shitty and someone's like, hey, you did this. This was kind of shitty. And you're like, nah, man, fuck you. I'm not shitty. You're just an even shittier person. But just because you like someone doesn't mean that that person's the best fit for you over time. Doesn't mean that that person is better than other people for you. Doesn't mean that that person is even good for you. Like you can love someone and have the best time with them and they can treat you with respect and everything be good. But maybe that's not the best person for you. Maybe you could have that exact and relationship with someone else who maybe there's always someone else that could maybe top the person that you're with or the person that you're pining for so don't ever get caught up in like but I love them so much oh my god I have these emotions I never have these emotions I've only had these emotions for one or two people ever like blah 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 whatever because I've been there and when you have the feelings you're like oh my god these feelings are so strong this has to mean something like how the fuck can it not mean something that I feel this strongly about another person when I haven't felt this way in maybe a really long time and maybe the universe and God and the higher powers and fate and all these things that are always working in our favor all the time even when we get the short end of the stick even when we get totally shafted even when we get fucked in the ass by life it's all working out the way that it's meant to to grow you to make you better to become the best version of yourself so that by the time you do meet the person for you by the time you do kick off your career by the time you do do all these things for your fucking life that you've been wanting to do forever you're going to like have all these experiences under your belt and have a way tougher skin and just be able to handle everything with so much ease that if you just went into life head start like 18 fresh as fuck fresh out in the real world fresh out as an adult and just tried to like have your perfect relationship have your perfect career have the perfect college experience have all these perfect things happen for you straight out of the gate 
you would completely fail at all of it. How the fuck can you be successful in a relationship if you've never gone through like heartbreak and dealt with some shit before? How can you ever be successful in a career if you've never had a job before? How can you be successful at anything without experience? You know, like practice makes perfect. None of us will ever be perfect, but you can practice the fuck out of relationships, out of dating, out of sex, out of jobs, out of talking to people, out of networking. You can practice basically anything to finesse shit to be the best version of you. Just don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the boys that you like and maybe don't like you back or the boys that you like that end up liking someone else more. All you gotta do is focus on yourself and just keeping the best version of yourself and being self-aware and working on your flaws and working through your own shit and then someone will come along that you not only have emotions for but who also ticks off all your boxes and is compatible with you in the long run and will be a good partner for you for life. Because remember, in the long run, none of us are looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife or whatever. We're looking for a life partner, someone whose values line up with every part of life that matter to you. So if someone even has one thing going for them that maybe doesn't align with your values, don't be like, oh, well, I'll just sweep that under the rug. I'll get over it because I love them. My emotions are so strong. Emotions weren't enough, baby, because in five years, 10 years, 15 years, that shit is going to start to dig too deep under your skin. And that's why people get divorced because they're marrying people based off of emotion, which obviously you should have emotions and stuff for the person you marry, but they're not really picking people all the time based off of who's the best fit for them in terms of making my life the best it can be for me. That's about it for today's video. I wanna talk about that. I hope that was interesting. I know this was more serious. I don't really make many videos like this that are just serious, thought-provoking, let's just talk about some shit that I thought of. All those things where I do talk about stuff like this, I just make it like so much more humorous. I just wanna start making more kind of serious videos like this. Well, I love all of you. I hope you have a great weekend and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.